So um, today is the last um, chapter for the book, which is basically um, talk about uh, how you can use the essence of package and uh, how we can install, how we can use a package. And the last part, they discussed like how you can put some stuff together to from your existing model, some package to make package. So yeah, um, so what they say here is that there are many ways to create um, package in Python, um, mm -hmm. different like uh, tools that allows you to create a package. I'm not sure, is, is it also the same with R? Like, um, uh, um, like do we have a single way, I mean, tools that um, automate part, uh, R package, like uh, what do you call it, this one in the R? What do you call it, the Python, uh, the R package development tool? What is it yeah. called? Dev tools. Um, Dev tools. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's Dev so, tools, and then, but I think there are packages that help you write packages, like um, okay, like use this is really helpful. Okay. Yeah, use this. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So also in Python, they have those kind of stuff. Like they said, these two two tools include with Python. It comes with Python, but um, it's hard to extend and stuff like that. But what they are using is set of tools. Um, it has some kind of extra features and uh, much modern stuff. Um, you know, modern Python installation comes with set of tools. So I think this is what uh, Python people they are doing. And um, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so uh, uh, Python Packaging uh, Authority is working at maintaining a course of uh, project use in Python Packaging. So this. Uh, Python packaging, they are a kind of working group that maintains and uh, guide how uh, packages are um, developed in Python. So the essence oh, of Python. Yes. Real quick, I just wanted to share another resource from a colleague of mine whose name is Isabel from our studio. He created uh -huh. a cookie cutter pack uh, template for creating Python packages. I just put the link oh. in the chat. Okay. Yeah. Okay, for Python, not R. That's right. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Right, 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 right. right. Okay, I'll check it. Cool. So, yeah. So, as you already know, the, the main essence of uh, package is just um, instead for us to write some stuff, a um, uh, bit of chunk, then we can bring all those kind of stuff and put them as a uh, uh, standalone, uh, that kind of app. Um, but uh, before that, um, there are many things in Python that uh, you can see you have a module, you have a package. Um, so uh, the book uh, says a Python module is a single namespace with collection of values. So um, a module is a collection of value, a, a single file that is saved with the PY is a module, right? And that module is contain functions, contain values, contain class, any value, right? Um, so anything like, for example, we create a file, uh, a file like something that PY and this is module, right? Um, it, you can do a lot of stuff. And now um, having collection of modules, they do, um, you can have collection of modules, one, two, three, four, five, six, um, to do some related tasks. It's a bit tasking in the sense that it's not well structured and that's the essence of package. So a package is essentially a module, except it can have other modules. So you can see that a package itself is a module, except it can have other modules. Um, and indeed uh, uh, other package inside it. So for example, if we look at this uh, structure, here we have like R4DS, and now inside this R4DS, uh, what we define as module um, package, we must have um, Dunda init uh, file. So this is a Dunda init file. And when you have a folder, uh, Python, uh, and you have Dunda init, it's a package and you can have other module inside it. So here you can see you have something full, we have something module API, we have something module uh, this, and now inside this r.py, uh, we can see that, uh, this. we can see that we have another uh, folder here, we can see here is another uh, module inside, right, with dot in it, uh, dot in it. So we can see that um, uh, in essence, what it means to have a package is something like this. This is the structure. So here I have a package. Um, I have Dunda in it, and now I have a module. This is the package name. So I have a Dunda in it, 
Then he, here is a sub package. So here the main package. So inside this packet, I have a sub package, and that sub package that have then that in it and a module inside it. So this is basically uh, a way to uh, structure uh, the Python uh, packet. So we can see a package usually correspond to a dictionary uh, directory with a file in it called uh, Dunder or oh, called Dunda in it and any number of Python file or other package directories. So we can see um, this is a package and we have this, which is the thing that initiate the package when we call it or we install it. So it must have this and you can have any other file in it and you can have sub package in it. So that is basically what they discuss about package. And now um, you can have, for example, this is a file. Um, uh, we can see this is a module. Uh, um, uh, this is a, a, a full file. We have the PI. And now here we have some functions inside it. And this defines a module, right? So I think here um, I can see. Yeah. So here we can see this is a module because we have some. Uh, function inside add and stuff and now this is a module um all right so now after we create a, a module and um how can we um save it so now here they discuss about what is called import statement so assuming we have um already i i know we already have, know all these things but this is how the book started so now Adumin, now we have this uh, module, right? And now we save it with a name called foo.py. And now we want to use this uh, addition and whatsoever, some functions defined here. Now we can import this uh, module here. We are inside another thing called program. So this is a file, assuming this is a file called program.py. So for us to use all this function defined here, we need to import it, import foo, right? Now, when we import this, it means um, all these functions, everything now is in within this namespace. Now we can use this foo.grok to call this function. So we can access this function or everything here. Uh, we must use this something like this. And yeah, so this is basically how the import uh, works. So anyone want to add something before we continue? Um, okay, yeah, it's Isabel, I can see you share another resource about that, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Welcome to pack Python package. Wow, okay. <laughs> so this is about uh, development of Python package solely. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just in case it's helpful. <laughs> yeah, nice. Um, I will have a look at it, yeah. Okay, cool. So um, so here they talk about um packages versus modules. So we can see here that... Um, uh this for example this is collection of modules right so you have a big giant program you are writing uh this is doing some kind of uh, visualization this is doing some kind of uh, analysis this is doing some kind of uh, saving some report you know all these they are modules and um you don't actually put them together but the best way to do that you can create put these things together into a form of module right so maybe we can say this is a PCO report file faster. We can call the module called Porty here, and we have this um, Dunda in it. In it, so Dunda in it will uh, say that this is a package, right? So and we can have these files. We can see them exactly here, and they are inside. So this is now a package, and this is a collection of modules. So um, yeah. So the main thing is you pick a name and make it a top level directory. So you, you need to pick a name. To say what is the name of your package you want to do, right? So you can see here they say clearly picking this name is the most important first step. So also as we know in R, um, I think in R we can actually run some code. Is it uh, using use, use this to check whether package name exists or not, right? Um, if I'm not wrong, uh, is that correct? Yes, there is a function for that. I'll yeah <laughs> yeah so i'm not sure here in python whether they have that but i believe they should have because somebody can go and create <laughs> a package with already an existing so uh but here we can see dunda in it um maybe empty so this dunda in it uh it may be empty it doesn't contain anything but a package must contain it uh it is where the pack, uh, package is uh, started 
um, put your source files in the di di directory. So you can see this is a source file. This is a file, this is a file. This, then you, so then here you create a um, um, packet. Um, we can see here when packet is imported, the dunder init file is executed. So uh, you don't actually execute these. Um, when you import, for example, when you say import R4DS here, just for example here that I say R4DS, when you just import, this dunder init is executed automatically. When it executes, it will make all other, um, it will make all other modules or all other modules and other stuff available within the namespace. So when you import this, um, it will automatically um, call the dunder init and dunder init, it will actually um, make all these modules available within the namespace. So here you can see any names defined with this will be available. Yeah, any names defined in the dunder init will be available. Yeah, so there's one more thing um, here is that um, uh, any name. So here we said uh, the dunder init, the PUI can be empty, right? Um, it is not necessary and to contain something, but some people may have some kind of like global variable, some stuff that they want to assess. So they can put some stuff inside dunder init. So when you put the uh, stuff inside Dunder init, then when you import the package, import R4DS, anything that is inside Dunder init is now available. You can just call it with the package R4DS dot A. Example, um, uh, for instance, I have A defined inside um, Dunder init that you I have A equals to 10 or something like that. You can just directly access it. Uh, because uh, will be imported from the this uh, automatically. Or like we cannot do this uh, as we see, for example, if, um, if something is inside the module. So for example, here, um, we can see here we have uh, a module that PUI, for example, uh, oh no, no, we have a module that PUI, uh, food that PUI, and inside food we have add, we have sub, right? Now, if we have a module inside this package, R4DS, then this means that here we cannot use this like this r for ds dot add. This cannot I cannot do this because the add is inside module, uh, inside the module, right? And the dunder in it here. I, oh yeah, yeah. Dunder in it here. I give an example here. I have a equals to three. So this means that um, when I import r for ds everything inside the dunder in it is now available inside uh, your namespace and you can just use this but you cannot assess this so uh, this is something we should know but uh, this is how you can uh, assess it so how can you assess anything inside the module so um we uh, as you can see here we just use import rpods for for you to assess anything inside the module you need to import rpods then dot module name so here if it is this so i need to say um uh, import um, uh, r4ds if it is like it dot what is the name of the um, uh, module uh, so maybe foo that is the name so if this is the name of the module so we need to call them so this is some kind of hierarchy it means I call from here I I am I'm, I'm trying to assess everything here right so this is basically what this is telling us uh, this is how we can do that. Yeah, anyone want to add something before we continue? So uh, as I think we will see a lot of, yeah, uh, it's a bit here, we will see um, different ways to do this import. So um, using a package, how we can use a package, um, package serve as a namespace for import. This means that there are three level of import. There are now multi-level imports. So let's look at this. Now here, for example, you have a package name, you have Dunder in it, you have these um, uh, modules, you know, files. And now if you want to use, uh, for example, inside the reports, inside this report, we have a function um, or method called um, read portfolio, right? That can read a uh, file or whatsoever. Now, if we want to assess this um, read portfolio, what we can do is that we can say import, this is the package name, 40, the report, because this is the module name, right? So we have this import package name, module, right? Now, if you want to assess function, anything inside this report, 
So now you must use this um, one way. You must say faulty the report dot read portfolio. So you're assessing something inside this report, which is a function, right? So this is one way to do that. Uh, other variation is this. Uh, instead of here to import everything inside the report, so here import faulty the report. It if we have one million functions or whatsoever inside report that we are here now we import them and now if you want to use only one functions you you can see that it bloated your namespace right so you can say okay no i don't want to import everything inside here i just want to import a single function inside the report so for that you can say from 40 import report oh not that one um yeah import report uh Oh, okay, this is the example I want to show. So this is a, another variation here from Poti import report. So we can see here, uh, we import report um, everything here, which everything inside the report is now available in the namespace. So now we can say report, the read portfolio, we now assess in that, right? Another thing is um, you can also just um, import a single function, you know, um, from that. So here we can see from Poti, the report that is from here this import whatsoever inside here import read portfolio so we can see here we we can use read portfolio only and we don't need to use this dot operate uh dot to accept that so um, there are many ways to do that uh for example uh you can you import um something like this so when we say import something like this this will import everything for example it will import this module it will import this module this is, it will import this module so um inside because import if we uh inside this uh uh yeah so this is not recommended um uh for example from i can say from 40 uh yeah 40 import um everything right so here it will import everything from this stuff and this is not recommended because it will uh, so make some stuff uh... yeah so that's how we do import uh, anyone want to add something uh party balls um Silvella, you want to add something i don't think so i feel like all of this feels pretty familiar um i did find the package <laughs> that checks whether something is already on Korean. Do you know, is there an equivalent for PyPy? Um, oh, you say, what's the question? Oh, the package that like checks to see if, if somebody's already used a package name on Korean is called available. I'm just wondering oh, if there's oh, one oh. for Python too. Ah, oh, okay. I'm not sure actually. Yeah, yeah. Well, do some big okay. thing. Yeah. Okay, it's called available, right? Yep. Mm, um, okay. Yeah, I'm more used to R. I'm now just there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, we are trying to get, uh, yeah. So, yeah, so that's that. Um, so, yeah, they said there are two problems. Um, however, uh, there are two main problems with this approach uh, we discussed here. Input between file in the same package break. Uh, main script place inside packet break. So what does that mean? Import between files in the same package. So for example, uh, here you can see I have P calls, I have report. What about if I want to import this guy inside this guy? How can we do that? So let's look at problem import. Import between file in the same packet must now include the package name in the imp import. So here, this is the example we saw, right? Um, we have the package name, we have Donda in it, and we have these models. Now, if we look at this here, we have report.py, that is this guy, report.py. So inside this report.py, um, I want to actually um, import, uh, I want to use this uh, guy, right? So you can see here, this uh, zoom here is inside the file report.py. So here is inside report.py. So here you can see from Porti import file faster, right? Now we can see here, we can have dev some like that, return file parser dot pass the CSV. Um, yeah. So you can see here, um, what they say is that um, uh, import between file in the same package must now include the package name in the import. So you need to have the package name. Can we see that in the import? You must have that. So it, or like this one's here. Uh, 
yeah. So we must have package uh, name in the import, right? Oh. Let me see. Yeah, so that's what they mean. Um, so if we look at this, uh, the same thing, uh, one may say, okay, you no, know, import file faster because someone may think that because we are in the same namespace, I can just import this uh, file parser without calling directly from the top. Because you can see this guy there within the namespace. namespace. Someone may say, okay, if I'm calling this guy inside this guy, I just need, I, I can just use import file parser. But this will work. You must in call it from the beginning. It must have the file, uh, the package name. So this is what they are saying. Import between files in the same package must now include the package name in the import, yeah? So this is um, what they are saying, uh, yeah. Um, but they have, there is what is called relative import. So um, the relative import, basically what it does is that um, uh, we can use, instead for us to put the package name, we can use dot. Because if you look at this one here, I said, okay, from party import file parser, because this file parser is a module that they lie within the same space with report PY. Now, it means they are, so instead for you to write the name of the package because they lie within the same package, you can just remove this and put dot. I mean, dot means here, where we are, all of us, where we are. So that is what they call um, a relative. So you can say from dot import dot uh, mod name. So here you can see we can use this from this, import this, and now you can call this, right? Um, yeah, so that's uh, one problem they discussed, that if you have uh, modules um, inside the package, you must use the name, full name of the package, or you can use this uh, relative import to import the package inside another one. Um, yeah, so anyone want to add something before we continue? <laughs> yeah, okay. You're doing awesome. <laughs> okay. So yeah, so another thing is problem um, uh, main scripts, right? So um yeah, so we already know that um, if, for example, um, you want to run, um, yeah, so we know in Python, for example, uh, um, right, um, so for example, if we want to run, um, do I have any, let me see if I have any, um, Python file here. Uh, Okay, yeah, I have another one. Yeah, so we can see here, um, uh, greetings. Yeah, we can see we have a file called um, greeting and inside this file, we have this, right? Welcome, this is just what I have inside the file, right? So I open it and we can see here, if we want to run this file because it's a um, Python file, I can just call python.py, right? I run it, right? Now, how can we now run a file a module that is inside a package. So for example, this is the PUI, right? This is the PUI module. How can I, can I run it the same way? I run this guy, just call Python under this. Can I run it in the same way? No, this is what they are saying. Problem of main script. Running a package sub module as main script breaks. So here I cannot, I cannot see Python. Uh, P cost just called the package because this is the package name I'm referring to, you know, so this breaks. Uh, reason you are running Python on a single file and Python does not see the rest of the package structure correctly. So the way you need to do that, you need to specify what you call minus M. I, I really don't know why this minus M work, but this is what the book says. So if you want to um, run this guy, so you can see, uh, yeah, so you can see this, if you want to run it, you can see porty.pcos. So you can see this is the structure. Oh no. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. So you can see here, this is the structure we have, uh, where it is. Yeah, P cost, and we have 40 package and the module name. So if you want to run that, you need to um, call this minus M and run this, so this works. So in essence, now for us to run um, a module that is inside a package, we must use this, um, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, M and also we must reference it in this way. 
Um, I don't know actually much about this. If anyone wants to add something regarding this, um, yeah, feel free. But uh, this is how I see that uh, it works. In yeah, they write it. Um, yeah, anyone want to add something? No, I've never tried this okay. before. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, um, we need to take a challenge and now write each of us to write. Yeah. Uh, what you do you think? <laughs> recreate available in python <laughs> so. yeah i mean even if it's, uh, yeah even if it is simple a package uh yeah, yeah. i think right maybe i write in on my blog um just to create a simple package yeah uh, yeah that'd be <laughs> yeah. really good yeah okay now in it uh dunda in it files so dunda in it um oh i don't know like does anyone knows for example how can i write dunda in it to shows in uh here, for example, if I put this, like this, I do that. Can you see it doesn't show? Do you have an idea? Do you, have an idea? Huh. Do you need? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I um, think you want to make it a title? I didn't get what. Yes, what yes to just show. I want to done that in it to show. Um, like to sh show that it's still done that in it. But if I just um um. I, you know, it didn't that in it removed. Not only what if you it, add tilde at the beginning, okay? Tilde, uh, like keep the hash sign so it's title and then tilde or something like the markdowns that you use in the um slack to show that, like this. No, 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 like um, uh, this sign. Does the does it does this work? Okay, let me think. Ah, tilde. Oh. oh no! <laughs> yeah, keep the, hash, uh, keep the hash signs like this. So, I, I that, um, in it uh, that pi, something like this, ah, or okay. like the, another tilde at the end. Okay, let me see. Okay, another tilde at the end. No. Uh, yeah, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking like that's um, interesting. <laughs> yeah, oh. I think maybe you need to escape it, like with what, like this? Oh, uh, with uh, I think the other way. Ah. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's interesting. You only needed to escape it once. That I didn't think would have worked. Huh? Oh, interesting. Uh, but, but it's uh italicized huh. yeah it is <laughs> but let's see whether we can um another one oh no okay but it okay yeah this uh, <laughs> the italic format is coming from double underlines so it takes one of the underlines as uh, oh, that I as see. the italic format mm -hmm. yeah so both of them need to so be somehow you should put them in a quote and then um like this and yeah still counts it as a <laughs> italic well, formatting something like that oh this is oh, it but it but in a header it needs to be in a header uh Hey. Yeah. There you go. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Oh. Wow. That was <laughs> tricky. <laughs> um, it's so well, why do we need to escape them all? I I'm assuming like underscores a, a special character that needs to be escaped. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um I was thinking about it all the time. Okay. Yeah. So what is the um dunda in it file? So the, the book says the primary purpose of this file is to stitch modules together. So what this means it does is um, having all these modules, it stitch them together inside our um, this stuff. So considering a package with mod modules, uh, there seem to be three different approaches. So um, how can we use this Dunda init inside our package? There seems to be three different approach. Number one, Leave the init, um, dunda init blank. 
So you can see, for example, um, here, let's assume the dunder in it is blank, and now you can have your model. Just leave it blank. Um, another approach is import all modules in dunder init PY. Um, uh, another is import key functions from various models. So let's look at what this is telling us. Um, ah, okay, let me explain it better. So the first thing is, um, how can we actually, what are you going to put inside dunder init? The first thing is, dunder init can be empty, nothing inside it. This means that um, uh, everything you want to import, you must uh, import it explicitly. The second option is that import all modules in Dunder in it. So let's look at what this means. Uh, do I have an example? Yeah, this is the example. Okay. So what this means is that inside your Dunder init file, you can do the import. So if you do the import of all your file, then inside your function, inside your program, you don't need to do the import. You can just use everything. And uh, another thing is uh, you can import key functions from various modules directly into the package namespace. So let's look at it in uh, the best way to understand this. So for example, this is what we were doing, right? Um, this is dunder in it and this. Now, um, we know that uh, if we want to use anything here, we need to do from 40, import p course here. And now, uh, because this is a normal thing, we discuss how you can do that. But let's assume you don't want this. So let's assume that we put all the function you want to use in the Dunder init. So this is Dunder init. Can you see our porty, which is the uh, package name, and this is Dunder init. And now you can see here all this from so so import. Uh, portfolio course, portfolio report, you know, uh, from this P course, uh, the package name, P course, import portfolio course from this. So you can see here, these functions, portfolio course and portfolio report, they are now imported inside our Dunder init, right? So this is the second option I was talking about. Um, this is the second function, import, oh no, no, the second, uh, yeah, import key functions from various modules directly into the package. So you can see here, we import all this on inside the dining. Now, when we come here now to do the, uh, uh, when we come here now to do the uh, the stuff uh, from import PI, uh, from Porty import portfolio cost, uh, we can see here, oh no, 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 this one. Now you can only call portfolio cost because when you run the package, this thing will now be initialized and now you can just use this uh, uh, name to just call this. Um, I don't know if uh, if I'm making sense. Yeah, it just, it means we don't have to confirm that it's from P cost, right? Yeah. Yeah, I see. Makes yeah, sense? so you don't have to do all those kind of import and stuff like that. You can just use a function name. Can you see that directly and do all mm -hmm. the other things? You just, uh, because you, you know, when you um, uh, import uh, import uh, a package, uh, this one, no. When you import a package, it will automatically instantiate uh, the, the, it will automatically instantiate the uh, Dunder init PY, right? So if it initiate Dunder init, it means it automatically import your everything here. So you can just call it here. So that's uh, one way uh, it says here. Um, but also you can also insert for you to import uh, 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 functions, uh, import all modules. So you can import even modules, not uh, functions, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is also um, uh, another solution for scripts uh, we, where we saw we have a problem where in the sense that we cannot actually run a script inside the package like this, we need to use uh, this format. So this is another solution for that. Uh, what they said basically is that as not as you need to use minus M package module to run script in your package, this is it, right? Um, so here we use this, there's another alternative, right? Uh, a new top level scripts. So, um, this is uh, another uh, options they say. So what this means is that uh, 
we can have our package here um, import forty dot p cost. So if we look at this, um, let me take this guy. Okay, so if we, we want to do this, right? Um, so when we see this here, we import potty the p cost, we import this, and now import syst, and now p potty the p cost that main system that ug. Uh, it seems like I forgot this one. Um, uh, right, right, right. So I think um, here they are trying to explain another way to do the running of the script um, different from the first one. And um, so here we know this is a Python file. We want it to run with Python 3. Um, here, I think the name of the file, uh, PCOS. Anyway, I, I actually forget what they discuss here. Uh, right, let's, okay, let's go to here. So here they discuss about application structure um, or anyone, um, uh, Isabel, do you understand? You do remember this? Sorry, what is the question? Um, I said, do you remember this? Uh, this the discuss about another way to uh, solve the issue of running script inside a package. So they uh, explain it here, I think, uh, but um, I forgot what they, I, I, we remember now that for you to install a package, um, a, path, a file inside um, or anything inside a package, um, you need to use this minus M here. We can see that uh, here we have this, um, we want to assess it this way, but mm -hmm. here they are presenting another way, um, which I forgot actually what they explain here. Uh, so that's why I said, if you remember. Uh, not quite. <laughs> so let's look at that's the funny. next. Yeah, so the next thing is application structure um, here. Code organization and file structure is key to maintainability. As we know, there is no one size fits all. Uh, Python works with a lot of problems. So here, what they are saying is um, there are a lot of uh, ways to uh, structure your package. Um, so for example, this is the um, package name, right? You need to put the readme, you need to put the uh, some scripts you want. And now here we can see that uh, the potty, you can have your dot in it, this is the package. And this is your, so this is more or less like uh, they want to start discussing about the Python um, package structure, the way we have in R, like uh, we have the readme and all those stuff. So this is um, telling us the structure. So everything here, right? Everything here is the package. And here we have top down where we have our, uh, our other scripts that you have and also like um, the readme and stuff like that. So the top level, Porty app is a container for everything else, documentation, top level script, example, everything. So this is a container for everything. And again, the top level script, if any needed to exist outside the code package. So if you have, want to have any script that want to exist outside your Python uh, package, then it can be somewhere here. And um, this is the top level that contain everything. Um, yep, so. Yeah, okay. So that's uh, about the structure. And uh, let's go to the uh, what this is discuss about third party modules. Um, so as we know here also in Python, in R, we have module uh, packages that other people um, developed and we need to download them and install. Um, but uh, one good thing with Python, they, they, they said about Python is um, batteries included. So what do you mean by battery included in Python is that Python comes with what is called um, uh, free built packages, uh, like Python standard uh, standard package, is it called standard package or whatever, uh, standard library, which comes with over 200, I think, um, some uh, stuff that you can do. So what uh, they, they normally call Python um, nickname batteries included, meaning that it comes with many built-in models. 
Um, but there are other built-in models, uh, part, third party models that people develop. Um, here, for example, like PyPy, we can look at uh, many other things. Um, yeah, so this section uh, discussed basically uh, some of these stuff. Um, yeah, so let's look at the first one is um, uh, 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 module fast, search fast. So uh, the first thing is module search fast. So um, I'm not sure in R how this works. So for example, um, if you install a package in R and now you want to call a function, um, okay, you now import the package, right? Uh, we basically said import uh, tidyverse, right? Now when I try, what happened now is if I said import tidyverse, um, all these functions inside tidyverse package are now imported into the namespace. Is that correct? Do you mean library? Like yeah, library. library, library, yeah. Yeah, library. that's right, yeah. Okay, so, um, so, so um, now if you want to, so if you want to call, for example, you call uh, library uh, uh, tidyverse and now you want to say read and that's uh, called CSV, um, where exactly, um, okay, this is a question I want to ask. Now, if I say library tidyverse, everything now is within the namespace, right? Is that correct? So um, if I want to look at what is the content of the namespace, how can we do that in R? Can we do that in R? Um, do you mean like to look at the documentation within R? No, no, no. So for example, now I have library tidyverse only. So it means in my R code, I only import tidyverse, right? Now, when I import tidyverse, there are a lot of functions, um, stuff that I can use in tidyverse. Now, how can I see what are the available namespace, available functions that I can use at that namespace? I, I don't know if you understand the question. So let's yeah. look at um um what we uh, uh, because i want to make some kind of uh, analogy with that but uh, maybe i don't have best example so let's look at it so in python the directory is search like that do you mean um no here you are talking about documentation right mm -hmm. it, it, oh you way. mean like literally what are the available like, yeah like, more, uh... or less, more or less like that so let's look at it so in python Okay, what did you say? Um, let me see. Okay, in Python, the directory, yeah, maybe that one, I think. Maybe oh. that one that is said. So in Python, the directory is such when important modules and packages with input is called module search fast. So what I mean by that is that, um, for example, now, if I said import uh, pandas as pd, right? import pandas as pd. So now here I import pandas as pd, right? Now, if I want to use anything um, inside pandas, uh, for example, uh, the moment I say this import this and pandas, then every functions is now imported into the namespace in, in this particular namespace. Uh, and everything now is stored inside the current folder. Let's look at what they said. So if you import something and it's not located in one of those directory, you will get an import error exception. So um, um, in Python, the directory search when you import modules and packet. Okay, um, let me go back. Um, to show something here. Maybe it will be better with the example. Now we can see here, we have import NumPy as NAP. We have import Sys. We have, okay, let me remove this and just call this and call systems pass. Right, let me run this. So when I run this, you can see when I, I said import NumPy as NP and import system, import systems, import Sys. And now sys does pass. So this sys does pass show us where everything about NumPy that I import will now be included. So it is now inside the folder you are folder you are currently working. What they are saying is um, 
Sys is a built-in Python module that contains parameters specific to the system. It contains variable a method that interact with interpreter. And we have another, so this is a built-in module six. Uh, sys.pass is a built-in variable within the sys module. So this is like a built-in function within this. It contains a list of directories that the interpreter will search. So this sys.pass, uh, it contains list of directories that interpreter will search to find any functions related to this. Now, the first thing the directory it will search is where the default one, where your files reside. You can see here, my file reside inside this R for this, and now it can search all other stuff. So in essence, um, sys is a built-in Python module that contains parameters. It contains variable and method that interact with the interpreter. Uh, when a module is imported within a Python file, the interpreter first search for the specified module among built, it is built in module. So when I import module here, interpreter will try to search for uh, modules first by the Python modules that uh, built in Python module. If there is no built in Python module, then interpreter will look for the user defined module. Um, if it is not found, it looks through the list of directories. Um, uh, a direct, yeah, it could look to directories. So you can see that the directory where interpreter looks where packages are stored is sys.path, sys.path. So you can see here now when I import this, uh, there are different ways uh, uh, to specify the path. By default, the interpreter looks for a module within the current directory. To make the interpreter search some other directory, you just simply have to change the, the current directory. So here you can see because I say import the num import numpy as np, and now everything now is available. So it will search this. Another way to change the um, uh, path is to use Python path. And now you specify the location where everything is there. And now you can say, okay, now if you run this and now you can say import the sys and now this will also, and you can also uh, do append method. Uh, you can say sys.path append and now append where your package is and do that. So this is something that, um, as uh, you may see it, people are using sys.path. Sys.path is basically a module that, because here you can see I import it, import it, but inside it we have that path. It shows where uh, in Python the module will now be searched for to be used. So there is also um, Python, uh, standard library module. So um, here we can see, uh, we talk about uh, the first thing is, um, uh, uh, yeah, Python standard library. So we can see um, Python standard library are the library that comes built in with Python. So you don't need to install them. So uh, where is the location of that? If you look at this um, here, you can see Anaconda because I am inside uh, environment here. You can see environment I call uh, data science. Now it's inside live. Python 3.9, this, so you can see if you want to look at, a, but let's look at the, another one. Oh, okay. If it is standard library, uh, standard library modules, then it is uh, located inside this use R local live, this something like this. But for me, because I created, um, I'm using Anaconda and also I'm using uh, here, you can see all this stuff, all this one. Um, yeah, it's something like this but they must be inside the, this uh, bill, leave, um, Python 3.9. And, you know, so you can see this uh, standard library module is inside here. But if it's something that you install, it is not stored in leave. If, for example, you install pandas, numpy. So here you can see I said import numpy and now call numpy. So if it is um, third party package module that you saw, it is stored inside site package folder. So you can see this Anaconda data sign leave uh, Python 3.9, but there is another folder called uh, side package, then NumPy, you can see this is it. You can see it's stored, NumPy is stored inside side package. So here, for example, if I call not NumPy, for example, I'll call uh, import uh, pandas. And now here I have pandas. I run this guy, you can see here, inside site package, now we have pandas. So, and yeah, so what in essence, what they are telling us here is that uh, 
when you have library modules, where can you find install library? So all your library if is is uh, standard library is stored inside Lee. Um, but if it is third party module, it is installed is what is called side package. Um, yeah. And basically here is a step we all know how we can install package um, using P uh, package name. Uh, this is what they discuss. Um, yeah. Um, um, yeah. Anyone want to ask something? I have been talking. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's already yeah. time. Yeah. Ah. Okay. So, yeah. but like you said, it'd be good to practice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think I guess um this is basically um uh, the, uh it is already time. So this they, they, they discuss about um problem with the uh, uh installing package in your native Python environment. For example, uh the best way is to create a virtual environment because there are some issues that um the Python comes with your system that allow you to do modify it and. Uh, uh maybe you are using your computer from your university or somewhere else so the best way is to create the python environment using uh bm one way and also you can use um uh also conda environment to create a package and yeah so finally distributions uh I, here they discuss about uh, how you can uh, uh, distribute your files after you uh, create um create a package uh now you need to create setup file and put everything here and now you create a manifest here and um, yeah so you want to use setup uh, python setup the py to uh, create the file and now you can do the installation of your package if you create it and now yeah so they finally the um ask uh, the uh, exercise to create a package uh, all this so this is a challenge um uh, <laughs> uh, uh isabella do you want to take the challenge to create a small package <laughs> well, I'm going on vacation starting Friday, but once I'm back, I will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, we are done with the book. Oh, you are coming on Friday. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, I'm going to Portugal. <laughs> ooh, when, when, when are you coming? Uh, well, I'm flying out on Friday, um, uh, and then I, I get like I'm there for two weeks, so uh, I'm flying into Lisbon. And we'll probably go a couple of days in, in Porto. Yeah, so I'm also flying on Saturday uh, for a conference in France, and I will com come back on 27, I guess. 27. Um, will you be in Porto by then? Let me check my schedule. So yeah, I will not be creating a package while I'm in Portugal, but <laughs> maybe <laughs> once I'm back. <laughs> yeah, I mean... What I mean, like, uh, uh, what, uh, uh, when will you be in Porto? Yeah, sorry, let me look at my calendar. Oh, I'll be there the 25th, the 26th, the 28th, and the 29th. Ah, oh, okay, okay. Maybe we can get to see you because, like, uh, I'll be back by then. Uh, yeah, the for sure. I'll, I'll message you. <laughs> okay. Right. okay okay well congratulations so we did yeah. it <laughs> we are done so are you awesome. in for the next book for maybe a couple of weeks after we relax and for the python for data analysis are you in for that yeah this is the one by um west mckinney right exactly yeah i would really like to do that yeah, <laughs> yeah this is one of the most recommended and uh, really excited because there's a new edition uh, he has finished everything here yeah, I think that'd be great. Okay, thank you very much and uh, happy to start the new book uh, in a couple of weeks. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank Have a good you. night. Bye -bye. Bye.